research has has become much more important. We've talked a little bit about, you know, how to engage with it, and actually maybe it can be dynamic, it can be exciting. At the same time, though, there is a lot of academic ness about it, a lot of intellect, you know, research tends to be pretty intellectual. I know there are some forms of research that are less so, but most of it is quite intellectual, quite academic, and certainly most of our students are not necessarily kind of coming from an academic background. And not only is that a bit frightening, but also it's a bit kind of difficult to, I suppose, a sense of perhaps of being a bit crushed by it, mm -hmm. you know, that they're because as a practitioner, there's a lot of intuition, there's a lot of reliance on one's kind of uh, practical kind of gut emotion, intuition. You know, you learn on the job and you develop some, a lot of insights and a lot of valuable skills. So is anything we could perhaps talk, uh, anything say about that really, about this kind of, in a way it's the head and the heart, it's the, yeah. it's the, the academic and the practitioner, it's, it's that kind of conflict. It's about finding your place in terms of what feels right for you, where you want to engage with research. Um, as we've indicated, research needs to happen at, at every level of the, of, as a, in your work as a practitioner. If you are not interested in a traditional academic style research, which has its very particular register and discourse, and its own particular protocols and can seem quite intimidating and often very expensive and time consuming. And incomprehensible. And incomprehensible, unless you actually learn the language. Which can take a long time. Which can take a long time. But if you don't want to engage with that, you need to remember that you are also engaging in research at a much smaller level in your everyday work. What BACP's tried to do is to start embedding that into an ethical requirement to foreground it, to make people think very carefully. So in the new ethical framework, which has just been published and is implemented at the 1st of July of 2016, that in one of the commitments, there is a commitment to monitor the work we do with our clients and the effect that that is having on the work with the client. So there's, there is within that an ethical requirement for us to pause, to embed into our everyday work assessment. We're not just going through the, the motions of things we think we should be doing, but we're being very dynamic. We're monitoring, we're perhaps feeding back with the client, we're probably maybe, maybe finding other ways in which we're assessing whether we're being effective in the work with the client. That's key research that is in the is in the control of every practitioner for their own practice. And to embed it as an ethical requirement raises it, foregrounds it, and brings it to everyone's attention. That's what we need to be doing. Now, research as it moves into the, uh, into the more academic discourse, BCP is very conscious of that. And you know, not everybody wants to spend their time reading uh, the very formulaic academic papers, which are, and of course the reason why they're formulaic is to ensure that they can be benchmarked, easily peer-reviewed. The credibility of that research can which consequently be measured. So it's important. I was going to say that, that in a way, that's like an, a different group. Different, yes. The, the kind of researchers are also a group of peers yes. who share things together and critique each other's work so that it's of the highest Precisely. Standard and also an ethical standard. Yes. But not all of us wants to join that particular community. No. What's crucial, however, is the conclusions that that particular community draws within its research gets disseminated in an intelligent, intelligible way so that it can then start to inform practice across the board and becomes normalised. Now, BAC wants to start supporting that translation from one way, one discourse, one register of speaking into an, an, a one that's more familiar and others can quickly use and disseminate into their practice. So we're, we're building, we're creating digests of research, put it into more newsy style language quarterly e-bulletins to enable practitioners to quickly grasp the core of what's being 
promoted through research and then to decide whether this is something they want to explore further or think, actually, that gives me a really good idea of something I can immediately embed into my practice. So it's fine. we're trying to find ways in which we can bridge that communication gap. And that's one, I mean, CPCAB and BACP have recently agreed that we will offer a yeah. CPCAB Counselling Research Award, yeah. which will be aimed specifically at that. It's about taking research findings, conclusions, and trying to get them out there in the world, particularly in the, in the world of training, yes. uh, through video, yes. through dissemination through video. And it's a hugely exciting thing for us. It was a real joy when, we, uh, uh, when you suggested that. And, and there, for a researcher, the excitement of that, that their research moves immediately beyond the confines of the research community and starts being promulgated widely into the practice that they want to influence. And so research quickly starts making a difference to practice. Very exciting. It is exciting because, I mean, what we're hitting on here is that the, the, the presumption is that research outcome is always in an academic paper, in a journal the, that is really yeah. hard to read and understand. Because that's that group, that group of academic researchers. That's where they are. That's how they're, you know, and it's important that it's structured like that way because you need, it's about sharing with your peers, it's about getting critical feedback, it's about um, convincing them, really that you, what you've done is, um, is, is of a good standard in terms of research. So that's important. But the trouble is that it can also be quite an inward-looking group. Mm. And you can understand why. Mm. It takes a lot to get there, and it's a lot, of, mm. you know, a lot of learning and a lot of practice in terms of research to get there. But some very, very interesting things have come out in that group, and not enough mm. gets out there into the world of practice. Mm. Yeah, so disseminating research findings can be um, DVDs, can be books, can be conference presentations, can be training courses, can be good practice guidelines, can be all sorts of things. You know, when, when we hear the phrase something that is evidence based, you know, if, we, if we're producing, which we are, kind of good practice guidelines, which are going to sit alongside the, the new ethical framework, you know, these are evidence-based good practice guidelines. And what we mean by that is that, that they are research-informed. They're, they're, they're still passing on the key messages of the research, but they're doing it differently in a way that's accessible and meaningful to practitioners. And gives them credibility. So when it's represented in the workplace, other cognate professions will actually respect that and enables a dialogue and enables us to influence as a consequence. Yeah, so it's about being part of a broader set of professions, a community of professions, yes. a group of professions. Yes. Yeah. And, and from my own perspective, as I originally, well, I'm a counselling psychologist, but before I came, became a counselling psychologist, I was just a psychologist. And uh, I've gone back there over the last few years to have a look at what's been going on in, in, in psychology, you know, separate from counselling. Mm. And there's some very interesting stuff going on there. There's a lot of interesting Indeed. research findings that have come out that are, would be of real value. Yes. To, um, so it's about, it's about working collaboratively, perhaps, as, <coughs> as a group of professions with similar subject matter yes. called the human being yes. and their problems. <laughs> it, it is, and it's picking up on what Hayden was saying. It's like um, there is room for everybody here. There, so there, there are room for people to be researchers with a small R, thinking about their work, their practice, doing that in a, in a way that is meaningful, systematic, that is informed. It's almost like a kind of up, <coughs> upgrade to reflective practice. Yeah, if we, it, it's part of reflective practice, you know, it's part of what, of what we do. Well, I suppose what I mean by upgrade is about learning some of the skills of doing that in terms of uh, researching yeah. at that level. Yeah, and, and there's room for researchers with a capital R, people who, who do it as, as part of their job or, or as all of their job. You know, there's room for all of this. And um, there, there's also room for people who um, just want to be critical consumers of research. You know, and I think, I think the, the challenge for training is, um, yes, it's also, it, it is about teaching people some of the language to, to be able to access some of these papers, but actually I think it's often about um, encouraging and building confidence, because I do a lot of supervision of, of 
new people coming to do their first research project and the biggest challenge that they face isn't that they can't necessarily understand the language of it, they can read and learn that, it's their confidence. I, I was just having a discussion with somebody the other day and was saying, you know, why don't you take your idea and present it? And this person said to me, you must be joking. And I said, well, why am I joking? And they said, I couldn't possibly do that. Um, and, I can't, and, I, and I said, why can't you do that? And, and I think it's confidence. And I think people need to come out of So what was it they were... They, were, um... but they didn't believe that they were able to do it. They only looked at the research with the capital R oh, right, and it. thought, I can't do that. Mm. Um, and actually, good research is about, is about confidence. And, and if, if training courses aren't necessarily going to um, lead to everybody becoming researchers with capital R's, which clearly they're not, um, they should be encouraging people to have the confidence to read the papers and to be able to say, well, actually, that doesn't speak to me at all. Mm. If, you know, if I can't understand this, then that's not really helpful to me because there is bad research out there as well. You know, not all research is good research. Yeah. And, and we have to be able to have the confidence to critically evaluate and know what speaks to us and, and to be challenged by things, but also to know some of the stuff that, that isn't really helpful. Yeah, it could be bad, could also just be not that relevant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely.